All right, welcome back, traders and investors. We have a very special interview here with you. Um, I got uh, Brent live with me um, to help with some questions. Make sure to be in the chat too. Uh, Ms. Kara Swisher, co-executive editor of Recode. She also wrote the Boomtown column on the Marketplace section on the Wall Street Journal. Obviously one of the big names in tech reporting. Um, good morning, Kara. Thanks for joining us. No problem. Um, let's start off with a little bit about your um, experience and career and um, tell us how you came to um, co-create Recode um, earlier this year. Well, I, um, I've been doing it for many, many years. Since the mid-90s, I started covering tech for the Washington Post uh, when I worked there, and I covered AOL, the original, the beginnings of AOL. And then uh, from there, I started covering all kinds of companies that started to pop up uh, as the internet went public. Um, uh, when it was a defense department project that then was commercialized. And so I started covering all the companies that uh, cre were created in the in the wake of moving that into the uh, public uh, domain. All right. So uh, as Kyle mentioned, Recode, about a year ago, coming up on the year anniversary here in a couple months, tell us how Recode has gone for you. How, how have, uh, how's Recode been treating you? Oh, good. It's been, it's been great. You know, we've been doing it for 12 years. It's not dissimilar to all things uh, digital, which we started uh, you know, a decade ago uh, under Dad, Dad Jones. I worked at the Wall Street Journal before that as a reporter covering the Internet. Um, so it's, you know, we've been doing what we've been doing for, for a dozen years. So it's not a ton different because we're covering tech and doing our conferences and, and, um, and things like that. And so it's, uh, it's just that we switched uh, investors. We have, instead of Dow Jones, which owned 100%, we have an investor in NBC and also Windsor Media. So it's, it's not a ton different, but it's, you know, we own it now, which is great. Now, you've hosted um, Chicago Ideas Week with um, actually our investors, Brad Keywell and Eric Lafowski, uh, the light mm -hmm. bank uh, guys over there. Um, let's touch sure. on that real quick about uh, Groupon. What are your thoughts on that and also the, the online coupon retail space? Uh, well, you know, it's an important space, obviously, because everything's going to the mobile device and that's where people are going to get their discounts and, you know, awareness of when sales are happening as they're moving around. And, um, you know, Group One struggled, of course, but, it, you know, the original idea is a big and important one, which is a question of who's going to take advantage of this um, as, you know, as we iterate forward. But as a pioneer, Group One's a really important company. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to it at all, but it's uh, it's trying to, you know, establish itself as the, the player in the space and helping others, you know, get discounts, small businesses get discounts. And, you know, it's a real competitive market. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, uh, looking at and obviously, you know, with your, the wide range of um, uh, tech you're covering and everything going on, uh, I actually read a, uh, your tweets this morning. I saw a really great picture of the mm -hmm. pot calling the kettle black there with Google and the NSA. <laughs> um, what, what do you think uh, valuations of new tech right now, specifically the social space? How do you view them? I mean, especially you, you went through the the um, early 2000 and 2001 dot com bubble. Um, are you seeing sure. similar type trends right now, or are, is this is this something new? No, I mean, it's, it's, the tech goes through this thing periodically. There's things that are way overvalued. There's other companies that have great promise um, that uh, that deserve the valuations. And it's just a question of whether their revenues can catch up to the valuations they have. I mean, something like Uber is obviously a promising company, but the valuation is massive. Now, if you had paid, you know, if you had bought Google at that price, and it used to be at that price, people thought it was ridiculous. You know, people would have said it's too overvalued, and it turns out it's not overvalued at all. It grew into its best massive valuation it had. Um, other companies didn't, you know, like Groupon and others never did. And so I think it's just a question of picking the winners in this space and, and deciding which ones are going to be the ones that are going to impact um, you know, society the most and people using them and, and an ability to turn, you know, obvious popularity into something else. I actually got to read that article that you penned over the weekend. The title is uh, mm -hmm. Rupert, Rupert Murdoch says Google is worse than the yeah. NSA. That had nothing to do with valuation. That was just yeah, really, yeah. I understand. He, he, and, he and Google don't get along for right. years now. He's always sniping at them on Twitter. I, I mean, don't know why he just does it. There's all kinds of reasons why, but right. He's, I mean, uh, he's quite lively on Twitter. Do you have any, you know, uh, concerns about kind of the Big Brother thing that might be going around? You know, right now, obviously... Uh, I'm just as concerned about Rupert Murdoch as I am about Google. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so, I mean, all these companies have massive amounts of data on, um, 
based on the, on, on the consumers that willingly give up their you know give up their information constantly or constantly broadcasting data and information um, using cell phones and everything else and of course sharing things and so people love to share and they love to extract information from the internet and so in that exchange you're going to get a lot of data about people's movements and about their what they're buying purchases and their desires and so you know it's a two-way street consumers are liking these these devices and at the same time um, these companies have a great responsibility to take care of the, the information that they're getting and so they want to commercialize it so they can make money from it and, and monetize it and uh, and consumers want to get these these services for free and there's nothing free in this world I think that's really probably the message and so you have to think about where, how much privacy you want how much what happens to this information and of course that's where the government has to get involved regulators have to get involved uh, related to that, any kind of quick commentary on somebody like Facebook? What about them? About that they have a lot of information about you? you I mean, put a lot of information in there. Rupert. So, I mean, you know, they shouldn't be, you know, there's kind of a bit of a controversy because they've been, they manipulate the news feed to see your reactions. They're doing social experimenting on you, actually, which you willingly agreed to when you signed it, when you signed up because you accept their terms of service question is should they be able to get so much information about people um, once they use the service and, and right now you, you allow that because you, you use it and you agree to the way they have uh, set up the company. Obviously big news coming up and in, in the headlines a lot is the iPhone 6 for Apple. Uh, mm-hmm. Kara, what do you think about it? Is it going to meet expectations or is this going, I, mean, I kind of feel like this is a defining moment for Tim Cook here with the iPhone 6 coming out. Well, it's going to be a bigger phone. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's all kinds of things they're announcing. They're announcing some health initiatives yeah, and, uh, uh, you know, health information. It's a big area of interest for Tim Cook. It might be, you know, there's all kinds of things they're going to be upgrading probably. But I think probably a lot of the focus will be on the device itself. And so it's apparently larger. Uh, I have not seen it. So, um, and I don't think anybody has or many people have. Um, so, you know, it's sort of competing in that Samsung Galaxy space. So the, most people think they form factor of the iPhone is too small. And a lot of people like these sort of between the tablet and the phone areas because they're doing a lot more stuff on their on their phones. And so um, they've got to really just have a different device and the device is too small at this point. Are you a iPhone user or Samsung? Uh, iPhone. I use an iPhone. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I kind of have a little envy towards the, the Samsung phone. Um, at the same time, I love the guys, you know, I'm used to the Apple system and, and I like it and all my information is there. So I'm eager that they're putting out different devices uh, that don't just look the same. Uh, everybody, Kara Swisher here, I'm the co-executor and editor at Recode.net. If you're a tech E or you're trading tech stocks, this is definitely the voice to uh, be hearing. Um, Kara, just one more question here in, in kind of a, yeah. more of a, a generalized uh, type question. Type question. There's there's so much going on in in the acquisition space right now. Um, you know, obviously we've seen a lot of uh, Facebook and what what Google's been doing on the on the hardware front. Um, do you like mm-hmm. the 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 way it's moving? Um, one of the areas we really like are, is home automation. Um, but the hardware space in general, even with Uber kind of coming around, um, do you see Uber's more? Not, Uber's not hardware in any way. No, it's not hardware. hardware. Pure uh, software. Yep, pure software. You know what I'm talking about um, with Google and, and hardware. Do you like home automation? Uh, obviously, we saw Nest um, earlier uh, this year and mm-hmm. kind of going on. What is, what is your take on the uh, on that space? I think it's an important space. I think you know, mobile phones changed the game for everybody. You're, you're able to manipulate your home through, through your you're going to use your mobile phone as sort of, and what comes after the mobile phone, whatever that happens to be. Um, you're going to use these to automate your home, and it makes perfect sense to be able to manipulate your temperature and lighting and locks and all kinds of monitoring of, of how the home is used. Um, it, it's, it's going to happen. It's, it's just how it's going to be done. I mean, I think up until now it's been really difficult, um, and the, the, the devices that we use are really hard to use. And so. Uh, you know, there's a real welcome to the idea that someone's going to create things that are just, you know, it's a push of a button, just the like, way, you know, Uber is um, push a button, get a car. This is push a button, have your home work correctly. And I think that's inevitable. It's just a question of which devices, which devices are going to be there. There's probably going to be a bunch of them. Um, and then self-aware home appliances are super important. Um, you know, these appliances, even though there's kind of, it's kind of silly to turn your coffee maker on from upstairs, you know, eventually all this stuff will be completely, the home will be completely automated and you will not have, uh, you won't go around and, and turn on washing machines and turn on, 
turn on stoves and things like that will all be automated. Now, there's a ton of money going into financial technology, obviously, the space we're in right now. Do mm-hmm. you guys cover that on, on Recode often? Of course. We cover it all the time. What's happening in payments? And that's another, everything that can be digitized will be digitized. And obviously, payments makes perfect sense to do everything. I mean, the fact that you carry around money is, is going to be laughable someday. Why in the world do you carry around little pieces of paper and hand them to other people? Um, I think all that's going to be digitized. Um, and the question is, again, who's going to be the big players in that? And there's all kinds of people wanting to do that. Kara Swisher on from Recode.net. What, where is Recode going next? I mean, uh, the website itself obviously is, is a huge, huge player in the tech game. All of our investors are always watching it. But um, what are the future mm-hmm. plans for Recode? Well, you know, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. It's a really difficult market. I mean, advertising is very difficult on the web. And we're trying our best to figure out the correct business model. We, we do very well with events. We obviously have a lot of events, and they are very lucrative. And, you know, we're hoping to really sort of pioneer this area of really high-level journalism uh, at a at a low, you know, expense base, and, and we're trying to see if we can make a business out of it. We've done it for 12 years, done very well, and now we're on our own. We'll see how that goes. It's always a challenge to create a new business and to, and to create products that people love. Um, we're hoping that using, you know, high levels of quality and service and and um, and and accuracy, or something that people want to want to keep reading. And that's uh, you know, obviously, tech news never changes, never ends. So we're you know we're in a business where there's lots of news, lots of content. Tough space though with ads, and and we really do appreciate. Yeah, your th- tech is better than others, but you know that's, that's true. Just the way it goes. Very true. All right. Well, Kara, we really appreciate you coming on here this morning. Um, Again, that's Recode.net. For anyone that doesn't know, I I imagine you already do if you're following any of the the tech stocks. Uh, Kara, thanks a lot for your thoughts this morning, and uh, have a good one. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Have a good day.